हेलो चिल्ड्रन आई एम मधुमिता मैम एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द मैजिकल वर्ल्ड ऑफ मैथ्स सो चिल्ड्रन वॉट आर वी गोइंग टू लर्न टूडे लेट सी बिफोर वी स्टार्ट आई विल टेल यू वॉट हैपन फ्यू डेज बैक वेन वी वेर हैविंग आर डांस प्रैक्टिस इट वॉज अ डांस ऑन द पैट्रियाटिक सॉन्ग सो दे आर चिल्ड्रेन वेर सपोज टू होल्ड द इंडियन फ्लैग सो आई टोल्ड दम वाई डोंट यू ड्रॉ इट योर सेल्फ सो दे ड्रू एंड कलर इट एंड वेन दे ब्रॉट इट टू मी आई सॉ दैट मेनी ऑफ दैम हैव डन करेक्टली बट मेनी ऑफ दैम हैव डन लिटल बिट ऑफ मिस्टेक चिल्ड्रेन डू यू नो एवरी कंट्री हैज इट्स यूनिक फ्लैग एंड एवरी फ्लैग हैज गॉट्स इट ओन प्रॉपर्टी ओन यूनिक फीचर दैट मीन्स वी कैनॉट चेंज दैट if we have to draw or color the flag of that particular country then we have to also obey all the rules so today i will tell you what how our indian flag is colored so i said that a child who has done it correctly i said a child why don't you go and explain your friends what is the correct way of drawing and coloring so he said of course ma'am i will so let's see now now on your screen you can see the pa- the like blank flag it is this is a blank flag it is it is no it has got no color it has got nothing so let's see how indian flag is colored now the top one third of our flag is always colored in saffron color what is the meaning of saffron it is the orange color and what is the color of the middle one third of the flag yes children you must have seen it do you remember now yes it is white in color and what is the f- uh, uh, part which is colored in green which part is colored in green yes do you remember of course it is the bottom one third part is colored in green and where do you draw the ashoka chakra yes children the ashoka chakra is drawn on the white part of the flag so let's see now how our pride of our indian uh, india and our indian flag looks like this is our indian flag now children only by looking at the flag you can see that the flag is exactly divided into three parts the way i had shown you it is a blank flag and it is divided into three equal part so one third means one part out of that three parts is colored in saffron the next uh, one third is colored in white and the bottom one third is colored in green and the ashoka chakra is drawn in the middle that is on the white part do you know from where did we get this emblem this ashoka chakra it is from the pillar of ashoka where the chakra is already drawn so this is our national the from the national emblem only we have taken out ashoka chakra it is called dharma chakra and do you know what is the significance of this colors why not yellow why not blue why not other colors because for indian flag the orange color shows the sacrifices our freedom fighters have made to make us independent and the white color shows the peace and the green color shows the prosperity of our country the prosperity of our country and the blue color is the white the blue color on the white uh, this is the dharma chakra and it has got 24 spokes in it now when we have divided the flag into three equal parts do you think that it is exact the white part is exactly one third do you think so just just think a little bit is it exactly one third or little less than one third why it is little less than one third can you think yes children it is little less than one third because there is a blue chakra on it because there is a blue chakra some part is taken by the blue color also so orange and green are exactly one third but white is little less than one third now let's go to the next uh a uh, slide here we can see there are some other flags of some other countries like afghanistan you can see the flag of the afghanistan which is exactly divided again into three parts it is divided into three parts it's and it consists of three colors 
that is black red and green color the question is now look at this flag how much of it is black yes children first how much of it is black to be decided we have to first understand how many total parts are it so there are three equal parts so how many parts are out of that black yes one part out of three part so we can write down the black color in the flag black color is equals to one third of the flag so the black color is one third of the flag similarly the next question is the green part of the flag can be written as you can see that the flag is divide, divided into three equal part so green color green color of the flag is equals to one third of the flag but is red less than one third of the flag do you remember just now i had given you the explanation why the white part is less than green and or, uh, orange so similarly the same thing is over here also why the red flag the red, red part is less than one third because it has got a white emblem on it it some part of the red color is occupied with that white emblem so definitely the red color is not exactly one third of the flag now let's take the next flag this is the flag of myanmar our neighbor even afghanistan is also our neighbor is blue more than one fourth of the flag or less now see the uh, flag carefully children this is the flag now if we divide the flag into equal parts so do you think that blue is more than one fourth of the flag or less than one fourth just think and decide for this you have to just divide the flag into equal parts and find out on your own whether the blue part is exactly one fourth or less than one fourth or more than one foot maybe let's see now you can do it on your own by dividing the flag into equal parts now these are the flags of some different countries flag of netherland flag of belgium flag of mexico flag of ireland now do you think that there is a similarity between the flag of ireland and india yes children there the colors are very much similar now you can have your own questions whether the different parts of the flags are equal with each other or there is something else in the flag which ma makes it not equal with the other parts of the flag so children you can find out all these things by looking at the flags of this country and you can also add some more countries flags also looking at the flag and finding out the colors is also a part of the thing which we are learning now that is parts and holes now children by giving these examples i just wanted to emphasize on what are parts and what is a whole a whole is just something which is actually the bigger thing the bigger thing from which parts are taken out let's see the next slide we will be able to understand in a better way now this is the flag of maths club in kerala and they have they have made it uh, they have made their own design and they have made a uh, bit uh, bigger uh, like tangram figure on the middle just to show that that is the part of the maths club do you know what a tangram is a tangram is a seven piece puzzle which is joined together it is a picture puzzle there are seven shapes which are joined together to make meaningful figure so this is what the school of kerala has done and they have divided the flag into five equal parts and have colored now the question is what part of the flag is colored red so children for that we have to first see how many total parts are there now this flag is divided into five equal parts as you can see from the picture it is divided into five equal parts and out of this five parts how many are colored in red this is one this is two so two part out of five part has been colored in red and what part is green now children here you can see only one part out of five part is written in like colored in green so uh, we can write down this as the red color is equals to 2 by 
five two five five and the green color green color is equals to one by five now what is this five and what is this two let's see now you can also design your own flag have you used the red color you can use the red color and you can use the other colors as well i have made my own flag over here i have designed it you can design your own flag using various colors various mathematical symbols and various other things as well so let's see now to understand what is the part and the whole first we have to understand what is this red color what is this green color is talk we are talking about so let's go back now now here the five is nothing but the whole which is divided into five parts so here you can see that this is the flag so it has been divided into five equal parts so five equal parts that is why the whole is written into five parts and the part is the color which has been used to color in red color similarly here also this is the five is nothing but the whole in which it is divided into equal parts so basically five part two parts out of five parts here it is one part out of five parts now let's go to the next slide this is a magic top now children when we are learning about this uh, whole and part we have to understand before we go further what there are some mathematical terms associated with it what is this two what is this one what is this five so five is here the five is called denominator the five is called denominator what is a denominator denominator is something the whole is divided into for example if the whole is divided into three equal parts then the denominator will be three if the whole is divided into five equal parts the denominator will be five if the whole is divided into eight equal parts the denominator will be eight so the number in which the whole is divided into equal parts is called denominator and the parts the parts which we take out of that denominator is called numerator it is called numerator so actually what is this part and what is this whole let me explain you again so actually when we are talking about two parts out of five parts that means we are actually dividing what we are doing we are actually dividing what we are dividing we are dividing into equal parts you must have learned in division the way we divide we have to find out when we divide we find out the equal part out of that division so similarly when we are talking about parts and wholes this 5 the uh, the one which i was just telling you this 5 5 means we are talking about five equal division five equal division let me give you one more example let's take a piece of roti okay this is a piece of roti and i divide it into seven or uh, i divide into eight equal parts to give to my friend so what i am doing i am actually dividing this whole roti in parts and wholes the whole is always written as one one and sometimes when we join the whole it are the two holes then three holes like that so when we are talking about a complete thing out of which we are taking the part this is one so this is one roti one roti divided into eight parts one roti divided into eight parts so this whole is now whole is equals to this whole is equals to now divided into eight parts this whole is equals to eight parts out of which i am giving one part to my friend one part to my friend so actually what am i doing i am dividing the whole into eight equal parts so one divided by eight one divided by eight that is equals to one by eight here in parts and wholes this one is one part out of eight part so this one is called numerator just now i told you and this 8 is called denominator denominator just now i had told now and this line this line is nothing but this is called a division line this is called a division line where 
we are actually dividing the whole into equal parts. One whole into eight parts. If I divide one whole into six parts, this eight will change into six. If I divide one whole into five parts, this eight will change into five. This is nothing but divide equal distribution. This is nothing but equal distribution. Now let's go to this magic top now. Now, children, this is something very interesting. When we were small, we always used to do this. And this has got a lot of uh, scientific properties also. Now, let's see how we can make that magic top. Now, for that, we have to take a cardboard piece. We have to take a cardboard piece, which we will divide into eight equal parts, which we will divide into eight equal parts, a circular cardboard piece, a circular cardboard piece, which we will divide into eight equal parts. So this is half, then again, this is one fourth because I'm dividing first into half, then into one fourth, then this one fourth half, then this is one fourth half. So every part is now one eighth of the circle. Every part is now one eighth of the circle. So how we are going to make the magic top? Now for that, we have to remember the colors which are in the rainbow because every color has got something very, very uh, like uh, fantastic property about this magic top. So unless until you follow that with your colors, you will not get the magic actually. You won't get the magical top, magic top. You will, you will get one top, but it will, it will not give you the magic. So for that, we have to, now the, you, the radius will be 3 centimeter. When you are drawing the circle, remember the radius, the point from center to the circle will be 3 centimeters. So draw a radius, divide it into 8 equal parts and take all the colors of rainbow. Do you remember? Yes, I'm writing down V, I, B, G, Y, O, R. These are the seven colors of rainbow. And now start coloring it. Color two eighths of it in red color, one eighth of it in orange color. It is given in, in your book as well. And one eighth of this in yellow color and so on. Unless until you have used all the colors, all the colors of the rainbow, keep on coloring. And now you push a matchstick on the middle and let's see how it looks like. Let's go. Let's see now. This is the way it has to be colored, the whole thing. Now can you see on the side when you turn it, what happens? Now when you turn it, the magic happens. When you turn this magic top, you won't be able to see any of the color. If you turn it very fast, you will only be able to see the white color which you are seeing right now on the slide. So you can also make your own magic top and show your friends the magic you have with maths. Understood? Isn't it very funny? So let's go now to the next slide. Now this is now we have learned about how to divide equally. Now let's have a practice time. Now Manju is a very nice girl. She is having a chocolate and she wants to distribute to all her friends. She doesn't want to eat on her, like the entire thing uh, herself. She wants to give her friends a part of it. So how she has distributed, let's see. She gave one fourth of it to Raji, one third to Sugatha and one sixth to Sheila. And whatever is left, she ate it. So how many pieces of chocolate each one got? Like, they let, let's see, uh, we have to find out. And this involves maths and little bit of calculation. So let's see now. Now first, Raji got one fourth of the chocolate. So see, you can see here I have divided the entire chocolate Manju has divided into four equal parts. Four equal parts. That means she has to give one fourth of the chocolate so she has divided, just now I told when we have, we have to divide the whole into equal parts, that is the, uh, that is the whole which is, he has divided into equal parts. So Raji's share is 12 divided by 4, 12 divided by 4. So each part will have how many pieces? Each part will have 
three pieces. Each part will have three pieces. Similarly, Sugatha has got one third of the chocolate. Again, Manju divided into three equal parts. So three, if she divides into three equal part, just now I told you division equal distribution. So 12 divided by three and Sugatha will get four pieces. And Sheila, let's see how many uh, pieces she is getting. She got one sixth of the chocolate. So now the chocolate is divided into six equal part. One, two, three, four, five, six parts. You can see the border. So uh, the chocolate is divided into six equal parts. And out of that, see, Sheila got one part out of six equal parts. So how many pieces she got? She got two pieces. Now let's see how many pieces they got in total. So Raji got three pieces and Sugatha got four pieces and uh, Sheila got two pieces. So total number of pieces they got is four, three plus four, seven plus nine pieces. Nine pieces of chocolate Manju gave. And how many pieces she had in the whole chocolate? There were, yes children, there were 12 pieces. So total number of pieces were, total number of pieces were 12, 12. So she gave nine pieces to her friend. So how many pieces she got? So Manju got, Manju got 12 minus nine is equals to three pieces. Don't you think Manju is a wonderful girl? She did not take the whole thing or like more than her friends. She just took equal as Raji. It, even she had given more to Sugata. So I, I think we all should follow Manju and divide our things the way she has divided among her friends. Isn't it? Now, did you understand? Now, when we are talking about dividing into equal parts, we have to see how many parts we are dividing into. If we are dividing into four parts, we'll divide it by four. If we are dividing into three equal parts, we will divide it by three. And if we're going to divide it into six equal parts, we will divide by six. The whole divided by six. Now let's go to the next one. Now this is called a fraction bar. Here also we can see that this bar is divided into different parts. Now if you divide the bar into two equal parts, the each part will show as half, one half. This is two parts and out of that one part is taken. So each part is half. If the fraction bar is divided into three equal parts, then each part is one third. Similarly, if the fraction bar is divided into four equal parts, each part is one fourth. And if the fraction bar is divided into six equal parts, each part is one sixth. The six, four, three, two, they are nothing but the parts into which the whole is divided. Now let's go to the next slide. Now here also the same thing we have to find out the we have to find out how many hats are colored in which color. Now according to this question that the, they said this is a group of hats then we have to color one third of the hats in red color and three fifth of the hats in blue color. So we have to first find out how many hats should be colored in red color and how many hats should be colored in blue color. So for that we have to first find out what is the whole? That means how many total hats are there? Yes, children, you can count how many total hats are there. I'm giving you some time. Please count. Yes, you are correct. The total number of hats are 15. There are total 15 hats are there. Now let's see how we will divide into one third, three fifth. Let's go to the next slide. Now total number of hats are 15. So if we divide 15 hats into three equal parts, that means we are going to divide 15 divided by three. So each part will have how many hats? You can see from here, one, two, three, four, five hats. As we have divided 15 into three equal parts, each part will have three, uh, five hats. 15 divided by three, which is equals to five hats. Next. Three fifth hats are blue. Here, three fifth means we are going to divide the whole into five equal parts because we are talking about three fifth. Three fifth is written like this. Now, one third of the hat is 
red. So one third means we are going to write down one third. One third hats are red in color, are red. That means we are dividing the 15 hats into three equal parts. Next is three fifth hat are color in, are blue in color. So that means we are going to divide 15 into five equal part. So if we divide 15 into five equal part, each part will have, see, you can see from the picture, each part will have one, two, three. Here I have divided into five equal part and each part will have three hats. And so three parts will have how many hats? Yes, three into three, nine hats. Now for that, now total in total, how many we have colored? One third hats are red. So we have colored five hats in red color. And similarly, three fifths are, hats are blue. So we have colored nine hats in blue color. So total number of hats colored is five plus nine. That is equals to 14. So do you think we have colored everything or we have left something also? Can we see now? Yes, let's go to the next slide. Yes, we have got one hat which is not colored because the total number of hats are 15 and we could color only 5 plus 9, 14 hats. So how many hats are left? 15 minus 14 which is equals to one hat that is in the middle that we have left in white color. Now you understood children how to calculate the parts from the whole. Now let's go to the next question. Now this is a triangle and the white triangle is divided into three equal parts and fill each one third part with different color. Now the, in book it has been done in one particular way but you can also divide into according to your own way but each part should have equal each part should be equal. So here I am showing you one particular way in which you can divide this into three equal parts and you can color each part in different color. You can also try out dividing the triangle in your own way into three equal parts. You can do it children now that you have learned how to divide you can always do it. Let's go now to the next slide. So Rani has divided this rectangle this green rectangle into six equal parts. Now she has done it according to her way and you can also divide the this kind of rectangle into your own way. In your own way you can divide this rectangle into six equal parts. I have done it in one particular way. You can see from here. Here I have divided this one, two, three, four, five, six and every part is equal. Here you can divide this yellow color, Try uh, rectangles are given and you can also divide according to your way. But it has to have, the main rule is the all the parts should be equal and it should be divided into six equal parts. So can you do it? Yes, you can try it out. You can try it out making it into equal parts. Now children, here you can see this is a green triangle, a green rectangle and this is a blue rectangle. And the green rectangle is larger than the blue rectangle. So do you think if I divide this blue rectangle into uh, six equal parts, then each par part will be less than the part, each part of the green rectangle? Yes or no? Yes, children, because when the whole is bigger and it is divided into equal parts, the one with a bigger hole is going to have that part in bigger number. Let's see with the number only. Let's take a fruit basket. It has got 12 apples and one fourth of those apple is given to Mohit. So Mohit will get 12 divided by 4, 3 apples because 12 apples divided into 4 equal parts. So Mohit is getting 3 apples. In another fruit basket, there are 8 apples and they are like uh, Mohini also is getting one fourth of those apples. So 8 divided by 4 equal to 2 apples. Now from here only you can see with the number example that if we are having a bigger hole here there are 12 apples whereas there is a, there are 8 apples only. So if I divide 12 into 4 equal parts I am getting 3. If I am uh, dividing 8 into 4 equal parts I am getting 3. Uh, sorry I am getting 2 apples. So 
the ones which is having bigger hole that is 12 apples is bigger than the ones having smaller hole that is 8 apples. Now with this example you came to know that the if we divide a hole into equal parts the one with the bigger hole will always have the bigger amount and the one with the smaller hole that the main rule is that we are going to divide into equal parts. If the bigger hole is divided into 5 equal parts then the smaller hole is also divided into 5 equal parts then only we can compare because if we compare if we do not divide into equal parts we cannot compare then that may be error when you are doing calculation. So now let us go to the next one. Now this is we are coming to a very interesting story of Birbal how he like understood the use of fraction and how nicely he was he, he like uh, used it according to his own benefit. Now Birbal was a young boy living in a village. He was very clever and could write poetry. He thought he could try his luck at King's Court. So he took some of his poems and set up for the city. Now when he reached the outer gate of the palace, he was stopped by the gatekeeper. He said, hey, stop there. Where are you going? Shouted the gatekeeper. I'm a poet. I want to see King Akbar and show my poems to him, replied the po poet. Now, Birbal was really very good in writing. So he said, let me go and uh, get some uh, prize uh, from the king because I'm, if nobody will hear me, how he will know that I'm such a good uh, writer. So he said, okay, let me go. But the gatekeeper was very like he, d he did not want Birbal to go without his permission. So he said, how, where are you going and why are you going? Then when we, Birbal explained him that he is a poet and want to see King Akbar, then he said, oh, you are a poet. The king is kind. He will surely give you a prize. I will let you in if you give me one tenth of the prize. Now Birbal said okay because he, he wanted, he desperately wanted to meet uh, uh, King Akbar. So he said okay, I will give you one tenth of the prize and he agreed. Then young Birbal agreed since he had no other way. So when he went in, the gatekeeper calculated. If he gets 100 gold coins, I will get dash gold coins. Now what is that? How do we fill in that blanks? Now he said I will get one tenth of your prize. I will take one tenth of your price. That means 100 uh, coins divided into 10 equal part. You keep on calculating. Then we will come to the end. The poet came to the second gatekeeper. This gatekeeper also said, I will let you in if you give me two fifth of your price. Now this one was little too much. He said, okay, I will not let you in if you do not agree to give me two fifth of your price. That time also Birbal agreed because again he wanted to meet King Akbar desperately. The gatekeeper happily calculated the poet will get at least 100 gold coins because he's good. He, he must have heard all his poetry also. So he said he will get at least 100 gold coins. So I will get 100, two fifth of 100. Keep on calculating children. Two fifth of 100. 100, 100 gold coins divided into five equal parts out of which five equal parts. He has to give two parts to the gatekeeper. 100 divided by 5 and again out of 5 those parts, 2 parts to the gatekeeper. Now you keep on calculating so that when we reach the end of the story, you will be able to know how many of them had got. The poet reached the last gate. The gatekeeper said, I will allow you to see the king only if you give me half of the prize money. That means, that means children, if he gets 100 coins, he has to give exactly to he has to divide into two equal parts and one part he has to give to that third third uh, gatekeeper the poet had no other way he agreed and went inside the gatekeeper thought today is a great day if he gets 100 gold coins i will get half of 100 but if he gets 1000 coins wow 1000 divided into two equal parts that means lot of coins children lot of coins let's see now what happened in the story now the king was very happy with the poems because Birbal was good so he said your work is very good you can ask anything as your prize my lord Birbal said I want hundred slaps king was surprised he said hundred slaps are you crazy who asks for slaps in the prize money and the king was shocked 
Now he asked, why did you ask for 100 slaps? Now then Birbal explained him, because of the uh, gatekeepers who, are, who do, did not want me to go inside and only let, let me in when they had uh, like uh, made a deal with me that I have to give one tenth, two fifth, and then half of the prize money. Now, if I get the gold coins as prize, then I have to give the gold coins. But if I get the slabs as the prize money, then I have to also divide the slabs because whatever I will get, I'll give that only. Now, the King Akbar was very happy and he said that you are one of the smartest person I have ever seen. You are really smart. That is why you want 100 slabs. Now, the, uh, let's calculate how many slabs each gatekeeper got. Now, one tenth of the, the first gatekeeper. The first gatekeeper said that, first gatekeeper said, I want one tenth of the prize money. Now, if there are 100 slabs for the prize money, then 100 divided into 10 equal parts. So, 100 divided by 10 equals to 10 slabs. Now, next gatekeeper said that I want two-fifth of the prize money. Two-fifth, the second gatekeeper asked two-fifth of the prize money. Two-fifth of the prize money. So, let's decide now. 100 divided by 5. This is into 5 equal parts. So, 20 and 20 is each one, each part is 20. So, two parts will be, two parts is, will be equal to 20 into 2, 40 slabs. 40 slabs and the last one the last person had asked I want half of your prize money that is 100 divided by 2 is equals to 50 slabs okay now let's see how many slabs in total they got 50 plus 40 plus 10 that is equals to 100 slabs now 100 slabs were over now, imagine if he had got prize money, his, all his prize money would have got over. So, he, isn't he clever to ask for slabs? Now, they got the slabs and Birbal was very happy to get prizes from King Akbar and King Akbar also praised him for his honesty and also his wisdom. Now, you understood children with little bit of calculation of this uh, mathematics then you can do so much so many wonderful things now birbal was good in calculation that is why he was so good like he divided into such a nice way that we like he did not get any slap but uh, imagine if he would have not done it properly then what would have happened okay children now i hope you have understood the parts and the holes how you can divide holes into equal parts and how you can find out the parts from that whole. I hope you have understood this much and we will uh, study more about fraction and more about parts and holes in the next chapter. Thank you so much.